Welcome to the quick version of the Norb Theory. If you guys find this interesting, I urge you to watch the full version. The link's in the description. So, a lot of controversy. Is it flat? Is it round? Are we spinning? Is there a curvature? Here's another theory. It kind of mixes both. Ancient Greek, Norse, and Hindu cosmology all focus on an orb as the universe. And after watching enough flat earth videos and a couple of these, I went down the rabbit hole of the cosmic egg. And after watching Martin's video, shout out to you, bro. I decided to make a 3D version presentation of the whole thing with my own couple spins. I urge you to watch his videos too. Links will be in the description. So let's walk through how this universe may have started. Step one, out of the void, the Holy Trinity gets created. Birth, life, death, repeat. Step two, the Holy Trinity creates its womb to protect itself from itself, the void. Then the Trinity separates into three, positive, neutral, and negative. Next step, the cosmic vortex is created. This gives us our oscillations, our weather, our currents, our airflow, etc. Then our actual earth, the rock, a three level pyramid on both sides. We are on the third plane. This gives us our four elements of life, air, earth, water, and fire. Up above, the galaxies and the stars and the firmament are put in place. Next, we have our toroidal fields. These electromagnetic fields protect and separate all the lands. They also oscillate at different speeds, giving us all our rotations of the different planets. Next, the suns and moons are put in place. Three suns, three moons with Mercury in the middle acting as both a sun and a moon. And there you have it, Earth, the universe, within a multiverse, within a masterverse. We can't get past lower Earth orbit. That's that first toroidal field to the lands of Mars and Venus. The Antarctic is not the South Pole. The Antarctic is the perimeter around that first toroidal field. When they say they're going to outer space, it doesn't mean up. It doesn't mean to land on stars. You can't do that. It means to go outside the perimeter to outer lands. When they talk about alien life forms or other life forms, it means coming from these other lands. So who knows what's beyond those perimeters? That could be the land of the aliens. Maybe we're the aliens. Maybe the outer, outer perimeter has even more life forms and resources and inhabitable land. Hmm, maybe some of us I already get to go there. One thing's for sure, if this is true, I could see why they'd want to hide it. The resources on these planes are obviously limited if this is all designed. If there really is a dome above us, and we're stuck here, and we can prove it, then the first thing we'll want to do is break out, figure it out. Why is it here? Why are we here? Who built this? Next, the religions will probably all claim they were right. Next, chaos, panic. The elite have done a great job at the divide and conquer campaigns over the last generations. Now, it's down to gender wars, identity wars, regional wars, resource wars, and the most important, the war on your mind, body, soul, spirit, perceptions, indoctrination of who you think you should become and what you should spend your life doing. We're not unified and that's the last thing they want. This scares some people. This makes others laugh. They'll continue believing we're spinning on a ball, defying all kinds of logistics, but okay. The cool thing though is we're having a mass awakening. All the holy books pretty much tell this same story, just giving all the variables and planets and suns and moons their own names and actors and stories to go by. Being in the arts for the last 25 years, well my whole life really, but professionally for 25 years, I understand one thing's for sure about music, art, feelings and this world itself, and that's frequencies and oscillations, and we all come from a sine wave. 
operate in oscillations and cycles and so does this planet it breathes it goes through cycles it goes through patterns the suns and moons go through multiple oscillations at the same time this model also explains lunar and solar eclipses rather easily rainbows color theory etc also rather easily the point of this if any don't let it scare you even if all of it is true if anything this should help you at least gain some knowledge become a little more illuminated and understand your life your body your mind your soul is also a big oscillation machine and you should be oscillating every single day at your full potential so that if this next life previous life we are our own ancestors thing is true you can ascend in your next lifetime to becoming your own star of stars star, star, star. Hey, 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 hey. I had my eyes closed, my ignorance was bliss But, but then it died slow as I replaced it with my fist Now, now, now I'd rather know and rise from this abyss Now, now that I'm aware that I'm infinite hey, consciousness hey, hey, hey. I had my eyes closed, ignorance was bliss Now I'm being followed for spreading these messages The threats might be hollow, my response is serious I, I reject Rain Man and the brothers still get wet I had my eyes closed hey, hey, hey. All of us used to be one on the same vibration. The best way to explain it? We'd have to go either back in time or back to the future. To the starting point of time. Zero. Where all the axes meet. This is actually the death and the rebirth of consciousness. My eyes closed, my ignorance was bliss But, but then it died slow as I replaced it with my fist now, now, now I'd rather know and rise from this abyss Now, now that I'm aware that I'm infinite consciousness I had my eyes closed, ignorance was bliss Now I'm being followed for spreading these messages The threats might be hollow, my response is serious I reject Rain Man and the brothers still get wet I had my eyes closed hey, hey. With the huge controversy on whether we do live on this spinning ball or a flat plane, I'm here to present an alternate theory, kind of mixing both. Ready? At first, out of the void, the nothingness, the timeless, spaceless, and matterless abyss, chaos finally met order. It is intelligent. It is beautiful. It is everything and nothing. It is all at once. It is syncretized. I call it infinite consciousness. One day it decided to finally create a womb for itself. Where it can build a home to create an experience within itself. So the Holy Trinity was designed, executed, and it's perfect. This is essentially the birth of consciousness. In the center is absolute consciousness, where everything overlaps. Birth, life, death, creation, sustenance, and destruction. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Everything is divided into threes, hence the 33 Point three 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 etc number being so popular and important in our society it's also worth noting this is where I believe the first sine wave was ever created that is the breath the in the out the up the down the left right etc this is life consciousness cycles repetition patterns 
With its intelligence, the Holy Trinity creates its home, its womb, the first of five rings. This is the seed of life, where everything starts. While slowly transitioning from chaos to order, the Trinity divided itself into three portions. Just like on a magnet, you have red and blue, positive and negative. Here we have birth, which is up top, Polaris, the highest star. In the middle we have life, which is green. And on the bottom we have death, which is red, negative polarity. This is also why we have RGB in our color codes. I'll actually explain that one in a bit more detail a little later, because it is important. Next, the Trinity started to stir its creation, essentially creating our cosmic vortex, the universal highway, and our atmosphere generator, all basically connecting us to the masterverse, so they say. Up top, this also creates the mainframe that powers it all. This gives us our energy, our weather, our flow of airs, waters, currents, all spinning clockwise, oscillating, and giving us our gases, gravities, densities, buoyancies, turbulence, etc. The upper part of the orb is known as the land of the gods. This is where the star of stars, the director of everything, sits. Under him, Omega, Andromeda, and the Milky Way, all giving birth to the first breath by Neptune and Uranus, giving it its first oscillation. This is what mixes everything. This is what creates our actual clockwise spin. We know it as the vortex, the cosmic vortex, or the black hole. Next, we have our actual Earth, built in three parts as well, both above and below. Like they say, as above, so below. So we have three-part pyramid here, and each level of these pyramids are our lands. So we have the crust, the mantle, inner core, and outer core. This is also what gives us our four elements of life. Air, earth, water, fire. Also, now that you have this viewpoint, you can see that there is such thing as space. However, it's not to go to other planets up there. It's to go to outer lands beyond our perimeter. Why can't we go to the perimeters? This is why, right here. These are called toroidal fields. You guys know them as the Van Allen belts. There are five toroidal fields that separate the lands and give each its own ecosystem, its own sun and moon, and give each its own atmosphere and rotate and oscillate to give the earth its breathing system. Okay, this allows the whole orb to breathe in and out. And these toroidal fields protect each perimeter, or we can call them districts. So we are on the center one, and you'll see four here with a tiny one in the center center of our Earth, which is the North Pole. Okay, there is an actual polar field there. There is actual energy there. Compasses get pulled there. So let's take a closer look. These electromagnetic fields all oscillate at different speeds. So if we go by this theory, then the sun is traveling around us at around a thousand miles an hour. And the other stars are also traveling in their respective speeds in their own perimeters. The second perimeter with Mars is 67,000 miles an hour. And the outer perimeter is close to half a million miles an hour. So all of these have their own oscillations, both the actual rings and the actual planets or sun and moons within them. Each of these lands, each of these rings, has four atmospheres to go along with it. 
and that is the troposphere on the bottom part, the stratosphere just above us, the mesosphere, and then the thermosphere. And again, going back to the vortex that spins from above and below is what gives all of these their oscillations. We're going to talk more about oscillations a little later because they are very, very important. Okay, so now let's break down the planets. Each land has its own sun and moon. Mercury, which is the very center of centers of everything in the North Pole, is both a sun and moon. Okay, it is both. Therefore, we're not counting it here. We're saying there's three suns and three moons, man and woman, left and right, positive, negative. Each land has its own ecosystem. This is where the theory of extraterrestrials or extra terrain, extra land, come from. The outer outer ring may also be where dinosaurs, creatures, aliens, again a different ecosystem, different light sources, colors, air, breath, everything is different. So when they say they're trying to explore outer space, it doesn't really mean up, because those are illuminaries, those are stars, those cannot be landed on. <laughs> they mean outer lands beyond the perimeters known as the South Pole or the Antarctic. You guys have taken in a lot of data. Congrats for sticking around this long. Let's quickly recap. We have the Holy Trinity creating the womb. Then the Holy Trinity separates into positive, neutrality, and negative. Then a vortex is created. Then a rock is created for our lands. Then our toroidal fields are created to create cycles and to create breath and to create oscillations. Then suns and moons are created and they also have their own oscillations and they are all respective to their own lands. So let's break down oscillations some more. Here we simply see a sun and a moon going around in a circle. And here we see three going around in circles. Now some are oscillating faster than others, but they're all generally going in a circle. And they are now going to oscillate in a lot of different ways as well. Here you see the original oscillation to the different types of patterns you can create while doing your big oscillation. So this is a double oscillation. And here you can see that all the planets are also moving up and down over their oscillations as well. So we have a big oscillation, and then a pattern within that as a secondary oscillation, then we're moving up and down as a third oscillation, and they're changing patterns over time and could be adding and removing other oscillations, who really knows? You can also create different types of oscillations based on the different wave type. We are known as a sine wave, everything is fluid. There are also sawtooth, triangle, and square wave types. This is also used a lot in music production, we'll go into that a little bit more later too. But you can see that these patterns create beautiful shapes and they also depict our time, our seasons, our summers, winters, when the planet's breathing, opening and closing, that gives us all of our different oscillations. These oscillations also explain the various lunar and solar eclipses. Think about it. In certain oscillations, the sun will be going in front of the moon. In other oscillations, the sun will be going behind the moon or vice versa. And that probably happens with all the planets. That's why sometimes you'll see people ask, why do I see two suns or three moons or whatever, the various variations and phenomena that we see. Generationally, these patterns have been tracked to some degree. If you actually pause the video as these are going around in their circles, you'll start to create amazing shapes. And if you connect all the planets and the dots, so to speak, you'll see where the yin-yang symbol comes from, the positive negatives come from, color theory comes from, 
frequencies come from. Everything, basically, comes from these oscillations. It is a beautiful system of design. They say the fallen angels or the illuminated ones have had this knowledge, which I'm presenting to you today as a simple theory, but there's probably some truths to some of this, uh, have had it for a long time, and it has been perverted and distorted over time. Now, just as a side note, wouldn't it be a great story to tell the populace that you cannot get off this plane, this planet, plane, because there is just infinite time and space outside of this plane? We only have access to the inner part. It is a special part of all this because it is the center and we have access to the North Pole, which is where ascension happens. And I do think we are in a special time. It's not just, let's prove the earth is flat. What's beyond that? So what if it is? Well, what might be outside those perimeters? Maybe there are things we need to protect ourselves from. And or maybe it is just a bunch of land we cannot get to. But every country, every government would love to, to chop it up, carve it up, because there's so many precious resources out there, potentially. Okay, so let's look at oscillations and frequencies in music now. I've been doing music production for a very long time, on top of doing art, digital media, video. I've gone through everything to do with art at a fundamental level in various gifted schools and whatnot. My creative side is, is my passion, my labor of love, and I believe I've been given these beautiful talents and skills to share beautiful information like this and potentially help you guys ascend or at least become illuminated and understand and have knowledge in a beautiful, engaging presentation. Here we have frequencies with music and layering music and giving you visuals for those frequencies. You can see that certain notes sit in the lower frequencies and certain notes sit in the higher frequencies. But here you can see layers of audio overlapping each other and creating beautiful waves as well. And when you layer things properly, you create harmonics, natural harmonics. And that's when the oscillations become beautiful visuals as well. So everything is everything. And this is another example of that. But when it comes to music and when it comes to artists hitting certain notes and singing certain melodies or priests chanting or other melodic structures or cording or layering of your voice or an instrument. Again, you get beautiful harmonics. So when we play something in the higher octaves, it sounds angelic. When we play something in the lower octaves, it sounds demon-like. If we take this one step further and add a visual and sound effects, you can definitely see how you can make someone uncomfortable or anxious by design. Now while watching this, think of your daily routine and how you oscillate and what you eat and what type of frequencies you take in, people you talk to, entertainment you take in, etc. You'll be surprised at how much negative energy you probably take in on a daily basis and don't even know it. You know when a musical artist is singing and they're off key, you can just tell, you can sense it, you know the harmonics are off. Or when someone's showing you a spoofy video, you can tell it's fake. Or when a journalist is spoofing a story, you can tell they're faking it. This is because the harmonics are off and your bullshit radar is basically detecting it. But when you do it through things like entertainment and movies and music and comedy, where there's a bit of truth to every joke, you play a very fine line 
of the types of perceptions you're presented with your whole life. So of course me showing you this stuff is probably making you reject it instinctively because your whole life you've been told we're living on a ball that's spinning in outer space in infinity. And in part, some of that might be true. Singularity could be the Big Bang. Our whole universe might well be flying through infinite void. But our actual land that we live on? Well, I'll let you be the judge. Or you've ended up on this video because you've already discovered your own truth. So what I'm trying to say, when you do listen to frequencies, watch movies, do your day to day, take in 5,000 logos, 400 cents, 300 people's eye contact and energies overlapping yours, think about what your purpose in this life is. Because my goal is to help you guys ascend to a higher state of consciousness, become illuminated, and you too are nothing but a big oscillation machine. When you breathe in and out, that's oscillating. When you walk, your whole body is oscillating. When you sleep, you're going through a cycle. Everything about us is oscillating and you should be oscillating to your full potential in this beautiful universe. In between the fourth and fifth toroidal fields is where the firmament sits. This is where all the stars are attached and fixated as they do their oscillation as well. This firmament is what prevents us from going up. In fact, there's footage online of rockets being sent up by independent teams, and you can clearly see it hit something up there before coming back down. Now, if you look up Operation Fishbowl and Operation High Jump, you'll come across some interesting information regarding the efforts that the governments have put in to try to get through the firmament. Anyway, that is how the star system works. Now the top two planets, Neptune and Uranus, are, I believe, also just above the firmament. They are what give the initial spin to the vortex. These two are also known as exoplanets, and that is because they are on the exterior of the toroidal fields and outside of the three suns and moons system. And again, this is what gives all the differentiation to all the oscillations of everything else under it. So we've covered a lot of the top half because that is our home and we don't really know what's on the bottom. But based on the same research sources, the bottom is very much like the top, except with water. There are also three levels below us that mimic what we have above. And then there's also a firmament on the very bottom, just above Pluto. Again, instead of air, it's water, and it's known as the Great Deep. The five toroidal fields operate down here to cycle the water in its respective cycles as well. And frankly, who knows what kind of life forms may be down there, or what may be down there. But this is known in our literature as hell. Interesting, huh? So, how does religion tie into all this? Let me try to explain, and this is just my opinion. I believe all the holy books were simply metaphorical stories to explain exactly what I just showed you. I don't believe there were actual people, I believe they were depicting everything you see here and all the variables were given their own characters. I'm gonna stick to the Bible here just to give you guys a couple random examples and then please refer to any of it for yourselves to see if you can pinpoint the metaphor. When they say Jesus died on the cross, that is a metaphor for Jesus is Christ. Christ represents consciousness. Consciousness died on the cross the cross is the crux, again, the cross section, the middle point of middle points. And if we look at the cross in a 3D format, you'll notice it's not a plus symbol. The center horizontal piece is moved up because on the universe, we are not in the center of centers. We are up a little bit on that third plane, right? So when consciousness died at the cross section of our universe, 
that is the North Pole. And when they say follow the North Star, that is Polaris. And the birth of Jesus is also under the North Star. The very center of the first toroidal field inside is known as the Garden of Eden. That is a holy place. That is a spiritual place. So when Christ was crucified, consciousness ascended into the heavens through the moons, because you come in through the suns and you leave through the moons, ascended into heaven, and three days later was reborn. Again, a metaphor for reincarnation or your next cycle, your next life. This is where past lives, future lives, we are our own ancestors, etc. comes from as well. Also, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit derives from this too. Pretty much every single thing you see in the holy books, it's a story and a metaphor to explain one of these variables in this beautiful universe. Hey, I'm just putting forth theories. I'm not trying to push any religion onto anybody, nor am I religious. But I do believe that people in ancient times simply had this knowledge and again told it to us in story form format or in book format or in holy book format. I thought a lot about how to close this out because I've given you a lot of intel and some of you are probably laughing while others have been here before and others are even farther along in the research than I am. Some of you are probably asking, where did you get all this info? Are you just making this shit up or is this actually sourced material or? Well, it's a mix of ancient literature, cosmology, science, and putting various random puzzle pieces together for a long time. Again, it's called the Norb Theory because it's just that. I don't believe in this definitively either. I just think it's a lot more plausible than what we're currently told. And as I close this out, I'm going to show you guys some screen caps of others that have taken this theory before me in their own ways and presented it. I'm also going to leave links in the description to the stuff that influenced me, at least some of it, that breaks some of this down and gives it even more context. So does it really matter if the earth is flat or not? Not really, at least not for those that already don't believe a lot of what we're told and taught. And there's a lot of us and more awakening every day. But I guess some of the fears would be that the religions would quickly claim they had the right story. There is a creator, something designed this thing, be it a simulation of a simulation or a great designer, a god, a greater being. And not to mention, they'd have to finally fess up that they've been lying this whole time and give us full disclosure, which may well happen. It's actually an exciting time as more people wake up. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot to learn. And it's amazing to finally realize we don't know that much about ourselves or where we live, at least not most of us. I always thought there must be some order. It's not just all chaos and random. And this was my final missing link to that thinking. There very well may be other life forms out there, aliens or whatever, but they're depicted very negatively, low frequencies, ugly creatures. They may be way ahead of us and looking at us as the aliens or the pests, the destructive species that can't even get into their own harmony. Keep them away from us, could be what they're saying. Never really know. So what's after this? Well, they say if you lived out your karma properly, you ascend. If not, you're doing this again. Is there gonna be a part two? Who knows? Hopefully, all of us will be actually living it instead of watching it on your screens. They have nations divided. They have religions divided. They have demographics divided. They have age groups divided. And now they're going after the biggest, the gender war. Whether we're going to space or we're going to the outer limits, I still believe the purpose of life is to be good versus evil. I still believe I've made it to where I've made it to in life because I've challenged everything and I've not been definitive with my thinking especially when it comes to belief systems, politics, the way I oscillate in this lifetime, and how I spend my time and resources and efforts to try to achieve my goals. As we go through this transitioning, this big mass awakening, I'm sure some of you can already feel it and sense it. 
more and more of you guys are going to come to your own truths faster and faster than ever before. So if anything, I'd love for you guys to at least keep an open mind to this and anything that is presented in front of you as fact and definitive. If you can't touch it yourself, explore it yourself, see it yourself, not just on a television screen, not just through news, not just through an organization, be it government or not, then don't just blindly believe it. Just because you've been told something your whole life doesn't make it true. But do your own research. And the five most important words that I don't think they want me telling you, they're simple. All you need is love. So the sun is Sunday, moon is Monday, Mars is Tuesday, Mercury, the center, is Wednesday, Jupiter is Thursday, Venus is Friday, Saturn is Saturday. We have a pretty interesting shape here. I decided to keep going and connecting the rest of the planets as they are all aligned. I started noticing really cool patterns of perspective and all kinds of shapes, stars, triangles, rectangles, and pretty evenly split pieces. Although the image itself is on a bit of a perspective angled downwards and a little to the right. So this won't come up perfectly and I'm simply in Photoshop using the shift command with the uh, pencil tool to connect one point to the next. So it's all kind of rough, not perfect. However, you still get the idea. I decided to keep going and connect the upper parts as well, starting with Polaris, Singularity, and I got even more perspective. Now I'm starting to see pyramids, three dimensions. And I started to think about some of our structures and some of our stories and the story of Babel, where they built the tower to try to get up there. And Polaris decided, nope, we're gonna flood everything. You guys gotta start over. You can't cheat the system to try to get up and ascend faster. And I started to look at some of the other pyramids and noticed the three big ones. It's important because the tallest is always Polaris. The second tallest is always a sun. And the third is always a moon. So the suns are always a little higher than the moons. Anyway, just thought this was kind of interesting as I start overlaying some of the images. Okay, so I start to go even higher now and connect the midpoint, the firmament, well, the midpoint up there. And I get even more perspective, perhaps even more dimensions. And again, as they are spinning and oscillating multiple directions at the same time and changing that directional pattern, we go through different cycles of time. We go through different cycles of energy. We go through different cycles of consciousness. Then I started to get a little sinister and look for logos that might fit and came upon this. Again, just theorizing, just having some fun and being creative, seeing what I could come up with. And as I get each new puzzle piece and go, aha, something interesting just happened. Let's add this to it. Let's add that to it. Um, this is just me, again, theorizing and being creative on perhaps why the chevron vector symbol is so important because it's an everyday use all around us in all our energies and all our logos. This is definitely one of my biggest masterpieces as far as compiling a bunch of info and presenting it with wicked graphics, my own music, Foley, 3D from scratch, pretty much everything you see here. And I'm really proud of this thing. So please feel free to share it, critique it, drop your comments below. If there's any corrections to be made, feel free to drop those too. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. 
I had my eyes closed, my ignorance was bliss But, but then it died slow as I replaced it with my fist Now, now, now I'd rather know and rise from this abyss Now, now that I'm aware that I'm infinite consciousness I had my eyes closed, ignorance was bliss Now I'm being followed for spreading these messages The threats might be hollow, my response serious I reject Rain Man and the brothers still get wet I had my eyes closed hey, hey, hey. I had my eyes closed. Eyes closed, eyes closed.